We read our scripture for this morning, and it can be found in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 8. And we will begin reading in verse number 40. Gospel according to St. Luke. Chapter 8, begin in the verse 40. And it reads thus then, So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him. But they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus. And he was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitude thronged him. Now the woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all of her livelihood of physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped, and Jesus said, Who touched me? But all denied it. Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitude swung and questioned. And he said, you touch me? But Jesus said, somebody, listen to this, somebody touch me. For I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not dead, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people her reason. She had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her, but he said, Do not weep, she's not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him knowing that she was dead. The word of God for the people of God. And let me all this morning be blessed by the reading and hearing of his divine word. At this time, we have another selection coming from our praise team.
those who are listening to us on this morning. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Yes, we need you, Lord. We need you. Every hour that you might have said, we need you. Lord, let your glory fall. Let your anointing fall. And let it fall fresh on us today. God, we give you praise and we give you glory for the great things that you have done. You are an awesome God. Oh God, in all of your ways, we want to acknowledge you because you are the one and true and living God. And God, fall on us this morning. Renew us this morning. Restore us this morning by allowing your Shekinah glory to fall fresh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fall fresh. Fall fresh, Lord. Fall fresh on us this morning.
God has to say to the people and the church of God one this morning. We read into the theory earlier, the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 53. But I want to read again, beginning with verse 43. And the Bible says, Now a woman having a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians, and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When everybody around him denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitude's strong and precious. And you say, touch me? But Jesus said, somebody touch me. For I received power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Amen. God's word for God's people. I want to use as Subject is warning or thought. Case five of a great physician. A case five of a great physician. I was prompted this past week to go back to this particular scripture and to pull out one of many of Jesus' cases that has been filed in the Word of God for us. And I did that after my daughter, early Monday morning, was admitted to the hospital with chest pains. She had gotten word from cardiologist about a month or so ago that if she ever experienced chest pains again, she needed to make sure that she got to the emergency room as soon as possible. Because if not, she could be threatening a stroke or a massive heart attack. So immediately, her daughter, which is my granddaughter, took her to the hospital. And I began to call on Jesus, the great physician and healer. Because I called on that name so many times before, and he has heard and answered my call. And as I began to search the scriptures to witness the healing of various people in the Bible that Jesus had healed, then I immediately put my daughter and even myself on that list. This morning, you can even add your name to the list. I believe all of us have visited the doctor's office at one time or another in our lives. But if you have her to see one living, you will have her name on file as well. Notice when you go to the doctor, you may have noticed somebody and it's possibly an assistant making notes in your chart. They record your temperature, your pulse, and even your blood pressure. They record your symptoms 
symptoms as well as your diagnosis. They record any treatment they do. And they do this so that any other physician will be able to see what you have already been treated for. You see, doctors encounter some strange cases every day. But no matter how strange the case may be, the doctors have a responsibility to keep it confidential. But as you can see, in Luke's gospel, who is also a doctor, just broke the hip of love. Whatever the doctor finds that is wrong with you, they are bound by hip not to discuss your case with family, with friends, or even your foes without your consent. But right here this morning, I gave access to a couple of patients' charts. And I know I'm not supposed to read the file of another patient, but I understand that I'm not the doctor. But Luke, the doctor, run against Hippa for our benefit and for God's glory. So he broke confidentiality and decided to share these patients' files with us. This great physician has treated many people, and you'll find that every case he's treated, he treats with the same care, the same concern, and the same compassion. That particular keeps accurate records. Most of the records are not sealed, but they are filed. And that's why it's easy to gain access because sometimes he heals without surgery. He's never been sued for malpractice. He's never lost a patient. His calendar is never too full. His waiting room always has an open seat for one more. The great physician who makes house calls. He's not concerned about whether you have Obamacare, Medicare, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, or have any insurance at all. He's never turned away a patient or asked for a copay or a deductible because he's already paid it off. One of his strangest cases is recounted to us in verse 45 of Luke's Gospel. But in this case, Jesus is a great physician. He doesn't touch the patient. He doesn't prescribe any medicine. He doesn't even make a diagnosis. But his patient is healed nevertheless. This text paints a picture for us of what happens when any sick, sick, same sick soul visits the office of the great physician. Regardless of what your condition is, you can go to him. With him, you don't need a second opinion. He's a one-stop shop. This physician never went to school, but he knows every field of medicine known to man. You have to trust him with your case. Look who's in the waiting room. Giannis and the woman with an issue of blood. Is there anybody sick in the house this morning? Maybe you're sick because your heart is broken. Maybe you're sick because your bills are due and you don't know where the money will come from. I don't know, maybe, just maybe, you are lost in sin this morning. Listen, there's a seat saved just for you in the waiting room. And so this morning, we want to focus our attention on just two patients in this waiting room. The first being Jairus' daughter, who the Bible says was laying at the point of death. Jairus comes running to Dr. Jesus with urgency in his voice, my daughter, lying at the point of death. Can you imagine on earth? 
to come. Lay hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. You know, we have to be careful how we approach Jesus. And we have to tell the Lord exactly what we want. The Bible says that if we come and have doubt in our hearts that we cannot expect anything from the Lord. And so I went to the Lord not doubting what he could do, but I like Jairus said, Lord, lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. And then we have this woman in our text. Now, the Bible does not name her. In the King James Version, it says a certain one. The Bible doesn't give her age, but simply says a certain woman. It doesn't miss her race, but a certain woman. This woman could be you. It, it, it could even be you. Or even you this woman. But, but, but you see, all of us are in need of healing because we all have issues of some kind. But if we look a little closer at these two cases, you will find that they are totally opposites. Even though Jairus and this woman have come to Jesus with an issue, great physician, they both met him at his feet. They are so different. Jairus was a leading Jewish man, but this certain woman was an anonymous woman with no position, no rest, Jairus was a leader in the synagogue, but her affliction kept her from the synagogue and the house of prayer. Jairus came pleading for his daughter, but this woman came with a plea for herself. It's good to know this morning, church, that, that, that just as you can go to Jesus for someone else, you can still call on him for yourself. The difference still don't stop there. Jerry's daughter was young. And I imagine that the woman was a little bit older. Jerry's daughter had been healthy for 12 years and then died. But this woman had been ill for 12 years and was a Jairus' plea was public. Everybody heard his request to Jesus. But on the other hand, this woman's plea was private. She came crawling behind him. She didn't tell anybody what was wrong with her. And she did it against the law. Because the law says anybody that was breathing like this woman should not be in public, nor should she. But this woman, like Jairus, they both trusted Jesus. So Jesus heeded the plea of Jairus. And remember, Jairus came to Jesus first. He stopped what he was doing and began to follow Jairus to his house. But along the way to treat one patient, he was interrupted by an emergency call with another patient, a certain woman. Don't you know this morning that Jesus will stop whatever he's doing and come and see about you? Your case is just as important as my case. And my focus this morning is more on the case file of the certain woman. And there are three things about the certain woman that I want you to know. I want you to see her disease. I want you to recognize her determination. And I want you to see her deliverance. Jesus was on his way to make a house call when this woman interrupted him. 
But know that Jesus was not annoyed or upset over this interruption, even though it was not planned. That lets me know that we should not get upset when we have to stop doing one thing in order to help somebody else. This woman had a disease that could not be cured by a human hand. This woman had a disease, but she was also discouraged, depressed, discomforted, and in despair. She heard about a physician in town that was in the sick people, raising up dead people. She, she, she heard about a man who was opening blinded eyes and unstopping dead ears. And so the more she heard, the more faith she gained. So she was determined that if this man can do all of that, surely he can heal my body from hemorrhaging. All she had to do is get up from where she was and go after what she needed. Listen, whatever you need this morning, you have to make up in your mind, I'm not sitting here anymore complaining. I'm not going to blame others for where I am. I'm going after what I need. Because she went after Jesus, she got her deliverance. She came to Jesus' disease, but she left delivered. She came to Jesus broken and bleeding, but she left whole and well. She came to Jesus bleeding, but she left covered in the blood of the Lamb. She had a blood issue, and it took a blood sacrifice to kill what was wrong with her. And as we travel the pathway of life, we are brought into contact with Jesus through the grace of God. When we had the crossroad church, all the got to do was reach out. This is what the woman did. All she did was reach out. And I asked you the question this morning, is there anybody here that can say like a, oh, him is saying, Father, I, I, I stretch my hand to thee. No, no other help I, I know if thou would draw thyself from me. Tell me where can I go? If he don't touch you, you reach out and touch him. And I declare something good will come out of it. Hallelujah. Now, now, while we're going through this pandemic, now, now, Sit at the feet of Jesus. Now is the time to exercise faith in God so that he can save you from whatever issues you have that is slowly killing you and dragging you down. This is your season. All you need is faith to believe it and you shall receive it. Yes, she had a disease. But just one church. <laughs> yes, she was broken and poor. But just one church. Yes, she was cursed. But just one church. She had gone to every doctor in town. But just one church. She had gotten worse. And she had spent everything that she had until she had no nothing else to offer. But just one touch from Jesus. She's a great physician who can heal with just one touch. So if you have faith, if he don't reach out and touch you, then you can reach out and touch him and get the same, same results. Who is this great physician? <laughs> Somebody called him Mary's baby. And that's all right. Uh, so somebody called him Joe Force pardon in the back. And, and, and that's all, all right. But when I, I went back to the Old Testament, Ezekiel said, look, he took a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And then Jeremiah said, he's just like fire that is shut up in my bones, in my hold up. Yes, Paul said, look, he's a 
He kept a record. And you can't see it. But all you can do is hear me tell you about it. Because I got a Savior. And he's sweet. I know. He's a healer. Yes, he is. He's a
So know that there's nothing that needs to separate you from the love of God. His healing power. And whatever else you need, God is still in the healing business. He can do anything. So, if you need to invite Jesus Christ into your life, that's where this journey begins. You're welcome to make that decision. Invite him into your heart and take that stand. Now to the King Eternal, the Mortal.